Hi, I'm Gaz Reynolds, and if you know nothing about me, well, sometimes I release records like this. And like this. And I'm also known as a TikTok star. Well anyway, something very strange happened to me five years ago and I decided to make a video about it because so many people have been asking me, where is my wife? Oh, I better start at the beginning. So five years ago, I actually had a really weird dream where I dreamt that I married an oriental looking woman with blonde hair. It's such a bizarre dream and story. I tell you, you're probably not gonna believe me and probably think I'm a bit crazy and you'd probably be right there. But this is genuinely a true story. Um, I had this dream and I saw this oriental lady, married her and also the dream showed me that we never ever met again. Well, little did I know that that was actually gonna happen. Um, this all happened five years ago. So anyway, to cut a long story short, Basically, um, some friends of mine introduced me to um, this lady who happened to be the sister of one of my so-called friends. I won't go into that story right now. Um, but anyway, uh, this lady contacted me on Facebook Messenger. As soon as I saw her, I realized that she was actually the lady that I saw in my dream. I didn't tell her at the time. I did tell her later on when I met her. Anyway, we became friends and a couple of weeks later I did something crazy, jumped on a plane to the Philippines and we got married. I was only there for a month. It all happened so quick and um, I am known for doing spontaneous crazy things and I certainly don't regret ever getting married to my wife and here's some pictures of us together. News of our wedding went viral and I even appeared on a radio interview. But then, sadly, I had to return back to England literally the day after we got married. And I can tell you now, that was very, very stressful um, and difficult for both of us. Uh, even to this day, it still affected me in ways that I can't even describe. Well, anyway, I came back to the UK and, um, well, uh, I was back for six months, but as soon as I got back, within a day or two, I was starting to get on TV shows. Um, very strange, because one of the phone calls that I got was actually from the Philippines, from an Australian TV network, and they put me on the show. And this is what happened. Hello, and welcome to Brigaview TV with your host, Ben. I'm here outside at Radio Harrow to interview songster and electro DJ Gaz Reynolds. Let's go chat had quite a few out now around the world so I wanted an outlet to actually um, get my records out and uh, fortunately I managed to pitch myself to a distribution company in, in uh, New York and uh, they gave me a worldwide distribution deal so now my records actually come out worldwide uh, so iTunes, Spotify, Amazon and all, all the stores that you can think of literally around the globe. Anyway I was so pleased and proud to be married to my wife Elsie that um, I'm also a musician and I decided to do a album of some of my songs to commemorate our wedding called The Wedding Album and it was I used one of the pictures from our wedding which is this cover here. Anyway, within a few months um, I was getting very very busy uh, with all this TV, all these TV shows that I was appearing on. There just seemed to be so many of them, it was just totally crazy. But one thing I didn't know is I was actually sick and I was getting very very unwell uh, and it got to the point where I was losing so much weight I actually wasn't eating or drinking at all and I got so skinny um, I had no energy at all in the end and I remember one day I woke up and I just couldn't get out of bed and so an ambulance was called and good job too because I was rushed to hospital to discover that I had four and a half hours to live. I know it all sounds very dramatic but it's a true story. At the hospital I was told that I had sepsis and I had four and a half hours to live and I had to have major surgery. Well you can imagine how I felt and I was told I had to have emergency surgery and I had to have it there and then. I refused it. They said, don't refuse it, you're going to die. Well, anyway, I managed to survive throughout the night just purely because I was so drugged up. In the morning, 
I was told there's no way I'm going to survive any longer and I could see there was blood coming out from everywhere. I was told I had sepsis and I literally had hours to live. So the surgeons were standing right next to my bed waiting to take me. Well, I had no choice. I had to go. It was a very nasty surgery and I'm going to show you some pictures now if you don't like horrible yucky stuff because even I don't like looking at this and I still can't believe that this was done to me but this is what happened look away now if you don't want to see it it's not nice well as you can see major surgery it affected my life and left me with a disability it's luckily not a permanent disability because I'm going to be having an operation soon to reverse what they actually did but that was five years ago so for five years I've been disabled and for a whole year I couldn't even work so I had no income. Well of course my wife she's left in another country and she didn't even know what happened to me when I was rushed into hospital because I was rushed into intensive care and I couldn't contact her in any way. I was in hospital for a month I couldn't even talk. I literally had tubes all the way down my nose into my throat and there was no way of contacting her. I did manage to contact her when I think I came out of hospital, but I was in such a bad way, I was so out of it, I just didn't really care about anything. It took me a year to learn how to walk again, and I had no income coming in. So for a whole year, I couldn't even get Elsie to come to the UK anyway, and I couldn't return back to her. It was a very difficult time. Now, I own a business, and eventually I managed to get that business up and running, but I could only return part-time because I was on so much medication. And that medication makes me very, very tired, so I can only work part-time. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't actually in the position to actually apply for a visa for Elsie, and I couldn't return back to her because of all the surgery that had been done to me. So I just wouldn't have been able to do a flight back to the Philippines 25 hours is a long time and those flights are pretty expensive so a lot of planning has to be put in if you're going to go over to the Philippines anyway to cut a long story short as I was just starting to arrange uh, to get a visa for Elsie as I started to get a little bit better and return back to more full-time work suddenly Covid came to the UK and we also had all this problem with Brexit now Brexit actually really severely affected my business and my income and at one point I actually completely ran out of money it wasn't a good time luckily my family stepped in and helped me out but then we had all the lockdowns with Covid and that was two years of my business being shut down and basically being unemployed. So I had about three years of being unemployed. But the strange thing was in that lockdown period somebody said to me, Gaz, all your old records are actually being used on TikTok. Well I'd heard of TikTok but I didn't really know what it was so I went and checked it out because this friend of mine said go and check it out I think you'd be quite good on TikTok. Well I've always made videos and certainly I've made YouTube videos and uh, so I had a look at TikTok and I saw all these people dancing to my videos and making videos with my music because I used to release records and so I thought wow so to cut a long story short I became a TikTok star so some people call me anyway <laughs> and I started to make lots of videos and I've got around about 140,000 followers and it's still growing at this point lots of my followers were saying that they loved one of my records called Electric Karma Sutra. they wanted a new version of it. I just happened to have a very famous friend of mine who is a very cool music producer. And he said, Gaz, I love this record. I would love to remix it. I said, you can do it as long as you don't screw it up. A few weeks back later, he came back with, wow, I was just blown away. Electric Karma Sutra 220. This is what it sounds like. Oh, and looks like, because I produced the video, filmed it and directed it and all even edited it. This is it now. So, 
we achieved 1.1 million sales. I couldn't believe it. So I realised, actually, I'm starting to get back on my feet. I told Elsie and I said, well, look, look I'm planning to, um, people are asking for new records from me. I'm planning to go back into this probably a little bit more full time. But I'm going to carry on running my business part time. And eventually I should be in a position where I will be able to bring you over here. Um, or even possibly come back and see you but I've got to have my operation to get myself back on my feet as well because I was waiting for this operation because of all these lockdowns that happened my operation got delayed and I've actually waited about four years to actually have the operation that I'm about to have it's a major operation and I won't be able to work again for quite some time anyway to cut a long story short I was going to see a friend of mine I was driving uh, to see a friend of mine and I hadn't written a new record, a new song in 15 years. And suddenly this song came in my head called, <laughs> get ready for it, I don't want to offend you, Bitches. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. But anyway, I wrote the song down, I pulled over, I wrote the song down. I started humming or singing the song into my phone. And then later on I actually sang the phone, <laughs> the song down the phone to my uh, music producer he said Gaz get in here quick quick get to the studio we've got to record this song this is a clip of my my new record that's out at the moment and it seems to be doing really really well well the thing is, that's all exciting, but the problem was I didn't realise that my wife was really, really suffering. And to be quite honest with you, we're so far away, 10,000 miles, our contact was getting quite bad and I didn't really know what was going on. If I didn't love my wife, why would I make an album about her? I was proud to be married to her. And in fact, actually, the remix record that I talked about, Electric Karma Sutra, I was so proud of my wife um, and sometimes she looks a bit similar to Bella Porch well that's what I said anyway so <laughs> one of the remixes is actually called my wife looks like Bella Porch take a look at this look there it is that's the end of my story if you've got a story similar to mine or if you liked my story or want to see more story time videos like this because I don't usually make them then leave comments down below and also don't forget to give this video a like and also consider following me because i've always got more stories and stuff to tell you well and i'm bound to be releasing more records very very soon in fact i've got more up my sleeve including one about my wife called kiss and fly watch out for that anyway hopefully you've enjoyed this video and hopefully i did a good job of telling all of you about what actually happened with my wife and I and like I said I've got no bad feelings I feel very sad about everything but you know watch this space and see what happens I'll see you in the next video bye oh and I love you bye